Okay, guys, this is our uh, sixth slide in our Westward Expansion Unit, and the second of the three big reasons that uh, the white government wanted land in the West. Mining was the first one. The second one here uh, is cattle. Uh, so, let's talk about the cattle boom. All right, now this happens when it does, really for four big reasons here. Um, the first one is the development of a new type of uh, cattle uh, through breeding called the Texas Longhorn. And there you see a picture of the Longhorn down on the bottom there. Uh, very famous, iconic American cattle, the Texas Longhorn. Um, it is bred for a specific reason because it was immune to a disease called Texas fever. Um, Texas fever could wipe out a herd of cattle very quickly. Um, and a lot of cattle were very susceptible to it. If Texas fever got into your herd and spread, you were your whole herd could die. Longhorns are immune to Texas fever. Just the way they're bred, they can't catch it. Longhorns are a very tough, hardy cow. Hit the thing upside the head with a skillet. It doesn't do any good. All right? uh, they're very tough, hard to kill. Uh, and Texas fever doesn't do it. All right? So that's number one, uh, the development of the Texas Longhorn. Uh, number two, we have the introduction of new cattle breeds from Europe. Okay? Um, and these new cattle breeds from Europe are very, very, very tasty. They have incredible beef, very tender, very flavorful, which is great and wonderful, um, except there's a problem. And the problem is that they're not tough. They're not hearty. Uh, the beef's very good, but they die pretty easily, Texas fever especially, but anything really. Um, you can get a whole lot of money as a rancher if you can get your European cattle to market and sell them because the beef is very good. Buyers will pay a lot of money for them. problem is they die pretty easily. Texas Longhorns, on the other hand, the beef's good, but it's not the greatest. Uh, it's a little tough, a little stringy. Um, but they're not going to die on you. So, you know, the wise rancher kind of had a mix of Texas Longhorns and European cattle. Um, it's a bit risky, the European ones, but you can make a whole lot of money on them. All right. So number three, uh, the reason for the growth here, access to free grazing lands. Uh, if you notice, kind of here, the plains are flat, wide open areas. Grasses grow up naturally on the plains, Ranchers just turn their cattle out into the plains and they eat the grass that grows up naturally. Uh, as a rancher, you are out zero dollars to feed your cattle. It's called the open range. Okay? The open range. Free grazing lands. The cattle just roam around and eat the grass that grows up. And if they eat it, it regrows and they come back and they eat it some more. Um, so, you know, if you've got... 5,000 cows, and you don't have to pay a dime to feed any of them, you're going to save a whole lot of money and make a whole lot of money. Uh, and number four, the fourth reason here, uh, the growth of the eastern cities. The cities in the east are growing and growing as more and more immigrants pile into the country. Um, how does the growth of a city in the east help a rancher in the west? Somebody's got to buy all the beef. The more and more people there are in the east, the more beef that they sell. So the growth of eastern cities means essentially just more buyers for the beef. Okay. Uh, so those are the four big reasons that uh, the cattle boom kind of succeeds when it does. Now, this is the point where I have to destroy some, some myths here for you um, about cowboys. Okay. Cowboys get that name for a reason. Their job is to take care of cows. That's your job as a cowboy, to take care of cows. Okay? That image that you have of a cowboy, thanks to Hollywood movies and so forth, is just that. It's the creation of Hollywood. Um, the typical average life of a cowboy was very boring, very dull, very solitary, very lonely. Okay? Um, your job was to take care of cows. So you rode around and you looked after the cows. Okay? 
there weren't, you know, I, now there were some, but your, your average cowboy never got into a shootout on the main street of the local town. Um, he, uh, uh, cowboys, and I hate to break it to you here, in spite of the games you played as a child in your backyard there with the neighbors, um, the cowboys never fought the Indians. It just didn't happen. By the time cowboys come along and ranchers, all the Indians have been rounded up and sent to live on a reservation. The Indians fought the U.S. Army, the U.S. Cavalry. They didn't fight the cowboys. So it's, it's just a Hollywood creation. Right? Um, one of your jobs as a cowboy, probably your biggest job, was a couple times a year uh, to run what's called the cattle drive. Okay? You had to get your cattle from your ranch to market, to sell them. Um, and your job was to take them to the nearest, what's called, railhead. Okay? Um, a railhead is where, it's a, it's a town where the head of the cattle trail met a railroad. So the head of the trail meets a railroad. So railhead. Okay? That's the town. Your job as the cowboy was to get your cattle from your ranch that you work for to the nearest railhead. Right? Um, so there would be, you know, a herd of cattle, a couple thousand big, several thousand cattle uh, for these big ranches uh, to get to market. So you and maybe eight, nine of your fellow cowboys would ride on your horse, you would ride around the outside of the herd of these cows um, for 12, 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Okay? Uh, and for that time that you're on your horse riding around the edge of the herd, you may not speak to another living being other than your horse. Okay? The, the nearest cowboy is too far away. you got to circle the herd so they don't wander off. All right? Uh, you may not speak to anybody. You, you, you spent the whole day in silence, just talking to your horse or yourself, whoever will listen. Right? Um, as a, you see in the picture here at the bottom of the page of the, the cattle drive, the cattle drive always had to follow water because the cows had to drink along the way, right? So wherever your ranch was, you would follow the nearest stream or river to get to the nearest railhead. Um, the cattle would eat the grass on the open range along the way. They'd drink the water in the river. you get them to market um, as best you could and sell them. Now, the best ranches were the ones that had water nearby and were close to a railhead because the further you had to march your cattle, the more weight they're going to lose. You wear them down. So the farther the cattle have to march, the worse it is. Because what determines how much money you get for your cattle? Well, one, what type of beef is it? But two, the weight. How much does your cow weigh? And the more they march, the less they weigh. Right? So the smart cowboy would do something called watering, stock watering. You would, uh, uh, right before you got to, you'd stop at the nearest river there, right before you got to the railhead, and you would have your cows drink and drink and drink and drink and drink and drink because they're adding water weight. And then you go, and they get them weighed, and you make more money that way, because they weigh more. And then they pee, but who cares, because you've already sold them, right? Um, so anyway, that's your life as a cowboy. You ride along, and you take care of cows. You may, when the cattle drive is not going on, you may uh, shoe your, 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 your cattle. You, you, uh, you would brand them. Right? You would, every ranch had its own little symbol, uh, and you would burn that symbol into the hide of the cattle so you could tell your cattle from the next. Because again, on the open range, all the cattle from all the ranches mixed together. Right? And your job as a cowboy would be to separate your cattle out from all the other ranches' cattle. And how did you tell yours from theirs? By their branding. Okay? Um, you may, you know, shoo off some coyotes or wolves or something like that that might endanger your cattle. But contrary to popular belief, the life of a cowboy was just very lonely and uh, solitary. So 
you, if you were thinking about being one, you're more than welcome to, but know what you're getting yourself into. All right? So anyway, you march your cattle to, to ranch, you, or to the railhead, you sell them uh, to a buyer, and then the buyer puts them on a railroad. The railroads are a big uh, advantage here for the cattle boom because they would put them on the railroads in the West, they would ship them back to the Midwest, to Kansas City or Chicago, uh, those are the big slaughter cities, send them back to the slaughterhouses where they became roasts or steaks or ground beef. Okay. Um, then, once the beef is slaughtered, you would put it onto a refrigerated railroad car. These are box cars lined with cork and filled with ice. Uh, and it allowed you to ship beef across the country. So you could get fresh beef uh, in New York City that had been raised all the way out in Texas. Right? Refrigerated rail cars are a huge uh, contribution here. Uh, and the railroads really allow this uh, to work. Okay? Now eventually, all good things come to an end. So let's talk about what brings the cattle boom to an end. Right? And it's just like there were four things that allowed it to grow. There are four things that kind of brought it to an end. The first one was the, uh, the development of barbed wire. Right? Uh, and up at the top there, you see a picture of uh, barbed wire. Everybody knows what that is. You take pieces of wire and twist the ends together. They're real pointy. You have the barbs sticking out. Um, ranchers hated barbed wire. But who liked it? Farmers liked it because farmers would get the land, uh, they would plant their crops, and the cattle would come right in and eat all the crops or trample them. If you notice the picture, there's no big forests on the plains there, not a lot of wood. So if you don't have enough wood to build a fence, you got to build a fence out of something else. So barbed wire. Um, if cattle that get hung up in barbed wire can get pretty well cut up, so ranchers hate it. Farmers love it. Farmers would far, uh, fence off their their farms, uh, and it kept kept the cattle out. But it also brought an end to the open range. No more just roaming your cattle around wherever you wanted to and eating the grass. Now you got to start buying feed, which gets very expensive. So uh, the development of barbed wire by a man named Let me give you his name, Joseph Glidden, G L I D D E N, Joseph Glidden. Uh, invented barbed wire and solved the farmers' problems and created a lot for the ranchers. Okay. Uh, number two, uh, overproduction. The ranchers do too good a job raising cattle. Um, there's too much beef, and when you have too much of something, what happens to the price of it? It goes down. So the, the ranchers kind of screw themselves here. They, they raise too much beef. Great for the consumer. Great for you and me. Prices go down. Beef is cheaper. But that means ranchers are making less for every cow they sell. Um, so they, they do too good a job raising beef here. Three, bad weather. Absolutely nothing you can do about it. Weather is what it is. Uh, but bad weather is a doom to the ranchers. Uh, summer droughts. There's no such thing as, you know, uh, massive irrigation at this point. Um, there's just not enough rivers throughout the West here, uh, you depend on rain. And when it doesn't rain, your cattle are going to die. They need to drink water, um, and they can drain a river pretty quickly, depending on how many you got. So um, you depend on rain to water your cattle. Uh, and if it doesn't rain, uh, you're in trouble. The heat can kill them. Uh, so excessive heat is a problem. Excessive cold. Uh, winters are a big problem on the, the plains. Uh, so bad weather, summer droughts, winter storms, blizzards, and all of that uh, can be a big problem. The fourth one is actually one specific example of bad weather. Right? Three was bad weather. Four is uh, the blizzard of 1886-87, kind of that, that winter spans both years. Uh, blizzard 1886-1887. Um, um, temperatures that winter on the plains hit 68 degrees below zero. That's actual. That's not wind chill. Actual 68 below during that winter. Um, and I don't care how hardy your Texas Longhorn is. Um, it can't survive 68 below zero. It's, it, the cattle are going to die. 
right? There's also, since it's a blizzard, lots of snow. If you look up here at the top corner, uh, it's a picture taken that winter. This is a train, right? On the tracks. They had to dig out the train tracks. These are people standing on top of the train cars. These are people standing on the snow alongside of the train cars. That's how deep the snow is, almost to the top of the train cars. There's nothing to do. You know, if you have one cow, two cows, you can put them in the barn and they might survive, maybe. Uh, you got 5,000 cows, you can't put them in a barn. They have to stay out in the weather, in the elements, uh, and when it looks like that, th there's nothing they're going to be able to do about it. Okay? So I, those are the four kind of causes here. Barbed wire, overproduction, uh, bad weather, and then one specific example of the bad weather, 1886. Right? Now, during that winter, 90% of the cattle are lost on the plains. 90% of the cattle. Small ranchers will be run out of business. There's, there's no way they can survive that. Big business ranching, big companies, are going to fight back. They're not simply just going to you know, give up their livelihood, give up the money they have made. They're going to fight back. Ranchers are going to start working together instead of in competition with each other. They're going to work uh, in cooperation with each other. Um, they're going to build silos, grain silos, so they can store grain to feed their cattle through the winter. Um, they're going to agree to produce fewer cattle so the prices go back up. Um, organization, working together, uh, will be the big key here for the ranchers.